Welcome to the Heat vs. the World podcast. And now, stand up and make some noise for your host, Joel Jacob. What's up, Heat Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Heat versus the World podcast. As always, I'm your host, Joel Jacob, and you can follow me on Twitter at JoelKJacob underscore. Without further delay, let's meet today's correspondents. First, we got Anthony. 14 more to go, y'all. We got George. 7 a.m. pod life. Let's go. Let's go. And last but not least, Christian. What's going on, Heat Nation? All right. So to begin today's episode, let's talk about game two for the Heat as Miami gets their second win of the series with a score of 115 to 105. Leading the way, you got Jimmy Butler with 45 points. That's right, y'all. 45. We hear four three-pointers as well, five rebounds, five assists, and two steals. Tyler Hero with 15 points and three rebounds. Max Cruz with 14 points, three three-pointers of his own, and four assists. And Gabe Vincent with 11 points, three three-pointers as well, and three assists too. With Miami officially being halfway through the first series of the playoffs, what's everyone's reactions to watching the Heat get this win? Start us off, George. Mama, there goes that man. Jimmy, Jimmy taking us to the promised land once again. That was exquisite, beautiful basketball. Shout out to Anthony who's putting up his autographed uh, jersey right now. That is, that is completely, you know, that is perfect. We need more of that. But Jimmy was phenomenal. The team itself, eh, we could have played better. But we expected that coming back. The, the, the Hawks were going to bounce back no matter what. It was, it was a matter of, of when, not if. We, we know they're a playoff team. We respect their game. That's why we destroyed them in the first game. But, um, you know, they came out. Had some really big performances from, from Bogdanovich. Even Trey Young had a better, better game. Still put that crap. But anyway, um, the, look, they're not, they're not fit to beat us. We weren't expecting that. But at the same time, the fact that they tried their absolute best with what, with what they had still with that Capella, they, they really put an emphasis on shutting down the shooters that we've got. Uh, but <laughs> once you shut down the shooters, you know, Jimmy goes straight to work. And, and I could not be happy with his performance and, and the resilience of the team. It got close at some points. We went behind a couple of times. But, the, you know, this is heat basketball. We don't give up. We don't stop until we get the ring. Exactly. I agree 100%. And how you feel, Anthony? Well, we can go on and on about Jimmy Butler, but... I mean, that, that goes without saying, really. Definition of a max player right there. But I kind of want to talk about that. Spolstra is like a madman. Like, we've seen Duncan Robinson be the star, the hero of game one, 27 points, led all scores. He played six minutes last game. He, he had more threes made in game one than minutes played in game two. That's crazy to me. But that's a credit to Spo. He goes with what works. Max Drews had a Max Drews, you know, had a little bit of a better game. So he played 22 minutes. Obviously, Gabe Vincent was incredible. I think we're going to get into the Heat's defense a little bit later. And that's all credit to him. And I was super happy to see Caitlin Martin get some more than garbage time minutes. He finished with 17 minutes last night. I absolutely love what Caitlin Martin gives us. And I also want to show some love to the Black Bird Man, aka the mechanic, aka Chris, or not Chris Anderson, Dwayne Deadman. He was phenomenal last night. He played exactly that Birdman role that he did for us in those championship years. And I think every team needs a guy just like that, a big who can come off the bench, play 10 to 15 minutes and just give you straight energy and hustle for in that time. And the, the way the crowd feeds off him is awesome, man. He was getting so hyped, so, so, so much into it. Same with Jimmy Butler. Uh, and that's what I love about this whole team, man. I can't wait. I got to catch a game later this year because they, they've been playing awesome. Right. And what's on your mind, Christian? This is exactly what I've been waiting for from Jimmy Butler. This is what we've been talking about pretty much for months now on Heat versus the World is can Jimmy Butler really be that number one guy? Can he step up? Or is it because Miami's a deep team that they're going to get those contributions from their role players? Last night, Jimmy left very little doubt in my mind that he can be that player for Miami. 
45 points, five and five. That's an insane stat line. Even if it's against a number eight seeded Hawks, it just shows you his potential. That's not like Jimmy Butler didn't have a 40 point triple double in the finals, not even two years ago. So it's definitely an amazing thing to see from Jimmy. And it's a great sign for Miami. Other key contributions included Max Struess with 14, Tyler Hero with 15. But aside from what happened inside the game, I want to talk about the interview after the game where Jimmy Butler was asked after seeing Chris Paul's performance in the fourth quarter against the Pelicans of game one, they said, are you kind of acknowledging that you're that guy for this team that when you need a bucket, you know, get out of my way, I'm going to do it. And Jimmy said, yes, yes, he has, because his teammates, his coaches, everyone in the organization had been encouraging him to shoot more, get into his rhythm. And you could tell by the end of the game, when the shot clock was winding down, the play that keeps on replaying over and over again on ESPN, when Jimmy takes that fading three from the right wing and you say, wow, because Jimmy going <laughs> four of seven from three is an insane number just for Jimmy in general. So I just love the way Jimmy played. The way that Spolstra did shake up the lineup, Robinson barely played, but he were still able to pull out a win. And even though Trey Young and Bogdanovich had some pretty decent games, Atlanta still couldn't catch up. So kudos to Jimmy. And we definitely have to see more of that in the coming uh, games. Right. For me personally, when I look back at this game, you know, someone brought up an interesting stat. And it's the fact that, like, what is it? I think Jimmy has 66 points in these first two games which is kind of crazy to think about because, you know, last season there was the whole meme about, oh, Jimmy only had 58 points in those four games. And the fact that we got to see Jimmy, you know, already have more than that, that just shows how he's moved on from it. And we're seeing a whole different him this year. And it's just something you love to see. Like the dude's been hooping this so far and, you know, you just want to see it continue. You know, who would have thought, 45 points we would have seen it yesterday and not only that and you know something we'll talk about later on in the pod but he's making a lot of threes too you know he's like he made four triples before he only made like three threes in a game this season and before that you know the idea of him making multiple threes was just kind of insane because in that regular season he was constantly struggling when it comes to shooting that three ball but to see him be more confident and make that shot especially that last three, which he made, you know, as a dagger against the Hawks in that game too. You know, it's just great. And overall, just what a night for him. You know, I just love to see it. And I know, George, you got something you want to add to this? Yeah, no, um, I I just really want to put an emphasis on something that Trey Young said uh, post-game, that uh, if they're going to keep playing that physical and not, not get the fouls, you know, fouls called, then, you know, it's going to be hard for them. Well, Trey Young, welcome to, you know, a real NBA team. Welcome to a team that actually plays defense. If you can't handle it, you go back home and do your, your photo shoots, you know, write your music. That's probably, you know, more, more your style. But if you aren't going to try and, and, and adjust, then I'm sorry, you, your coach is crap and <laughs> your, your team is just not prepared for this. I'm sorry. I, I can't respect the player that would go out there post game after getting, you know, two owed and then blame it on the referees. It's not the ref's fault. It's not the fact that it's not the fact that we're hacking out there. You know, you've got your fouls called. It, it happens all the time. You are the king foul beta. That's what you, that's what you are. But if you're saying that they're playing too physical on you, you this is a you problem. I'm sorry that your coaches are making the adjustments correctly to, to get you out of those positions. Your teammates don't have your back trying to get you, get you those screens to get you free enough and to get you away from the defenders. That's a, that's a problem on your team, not a problem on our team. So I just wanted to talk about him. He Look, I, I, I love Trey Young as a player. I do. I think he's good for the NBA coming in. He's got that, that star potential who really does. He's already a star in a lot of people's eyes as well. But if you're going to complain and complain and complain, you're gonna, it's going to get old real quick real quick and when it doesn't do it doesn't do anything for your career moving forward so keep your mouth shut chuck up some shots and then you know make everyone love you that way instead of you just crying i agree and you know a big shout out to gabe vincent by the way because one thing i loved was that you know they asked him you know how you felt about trey's comments and about how the heat were playing really physical and stuff the dude just smiled like the dude he was just loving it because you know what i feel like he was just loving the fact that 
Trey was basically saying, you know, in those comments that it's getting a little too hot in the kitchen right now. And if you can't take the heat, then get out. Ain't no point being in there because, you know, the heat, we know what this team is capable of. And like you said, George, we're not the Knicks. We're not the Cavs. We'll, we want the smoke. So either you can come in and take it or you could just leave. And right now we haven't seen that energy from Trey saying that he's ready for that smoke. And, you know, and uh, by the way, also another thing about Gabe that I really liked, you know, that I have to bring up is the fact that he had on that, um, what was it? The uh, national, the um, base. 1997, it, the, my, yeah, 1997 exactly. Florida Marlins. Yeah, exactly. NLCS champions. Yeah, I loved it, you know, because to those who don't know, for those who weren't alive back then, the Marlins beat the Braves just to get there. So the fact that he managed to throw in a little more shade about Miami owning Atlanta, like that, what else could you ask for? Like he ain't even from here and he's still embracing that Miami culture. So, you know, big shout outs to Gabe Vincent as well. And, you know, I feel like we've addressed so much about the game. You know, let's just quickly go into the Heat News stat of the week. Um, before we go into it, make sure to follow Heat Muse on Twitter for all Miami Heat stats. His handle is Heat M U S E. And with that being said, Jimmy Butler is the second player in NBA history with this type of stat line in the NBA playoffs 45 plus points. Well, he had 45 to be exact, zero turnovers, and zero fouls. The only person in NBA history to accomplish such a thing was Dominique Wilkins. To add on, Jimmy has also been a great three-point shooter so far, as he is currently shooting 55% from behind the arc, while the melting ice tray from Atlanta is currently shooting 12% from three. With that all being said, what do you guys make of these stats? Give us your thoughts, Anthony. Well, first of all, unreal stats. Thank you, Heat News, for that. I got another stat, too. Jimmy Butler's already scored more points this playoffs than he did last playoffs in half as many games, which is just crazy. I mean, part of that is because of how bad Jimmy was last year, but also how good he's been this year. Uh, I particularly like that second stat a lot, saying he's the second player ever with 45 points and no turnovers, no fouls. Shout out Dominique Wilkins for being the other guy. I don't think you can understate how difficult that is. Anybody that's ever played basketball before – knows how hard it is to actually have the ball in your hand that often and have zero turnover turnovers. And it's not like Jimmy's just scoring on catch and shoots, like on some Clay Thompson, Duncan Robinson type thing. No, he's, he's out there facilitating, driving, scoring. It's easy to turn it over and, you know, get a hand in there. Or the defense gets a hand in there, or maybe they smack you, don't get a foul call. And Jimmy's doing all this scoring while also being one of the top two defenders on the court at all times, running and passing lanes, you know, picking people's pockets, doing all those kinds of things. That's just super, super impressive. And the fact that he's actually out shooting Trey Young when Trey Young is supposed to be a shooter. I absolutely love that. Uh, I love the points that you and George brought up about, you know, Gabe Vincent basically locking him down and Trey Young's not used to that. Like, how do you complain about physicality in the playoffs? Like, it's the playoffs, bro. Like, you made it to the conference finals last year. Are you not familiar? This is not the regular season. This is not the playoffs against the Knicks, like, last year, a playing game versus the Cavs. So Trey Young needs to stop worrying about all that stuff and just play basketball, man. This is the playoffs. You know, this he's never seen a defense this good in his life, and we're seeing that. Um, so shout out Jimmy Butler for being the definition of a max player. And anybody that thinks he's not worth that contract, this is just a, a sign to them that tells you that you're wrong. I cannot agree like any more with you, Anthony, like that's spot on because you heard like all the commotion about the extension heading into the season, especially when Jimmy would have some off games here and there. Like it's nice to see him have like these type of games where he could shut those people up. And like Christian, how about you? It's such a great, great stat. Just look at Jimmy Butler and what he's been able to accomplish and I agree totally with Anthony having your, the ball in your hands for that long and not recording a single turnover or even on the defensive edge, just speaking to his defense, not committing a foul on the defensive end. That's just really, really great basketball. It's almost basketball at its purest. And as far as Trey, Trey was quoted saying, if the refs are going to let them be physical and not call fouls, it's going to be hard to win anyway. But in total during this series, there have been 26 foul calls for Atlanta and only 24 foul calls for Miami. So Atlanta has had more foul calls than Miami, and the refs are calling it 
fair both ways. They even called two extra fouls for Atlanta. So it's so interesting of him to say that they're not going to call the fouls and blow the whistle, but they have been, you know, you're just not <laughs> really, I, I don't think he, it's worth it to get the foul on him. So I just really think that from Jimmy's shooting perspective, like the fact that he's shooting better than Trey Young, I personally wouldn't have expected that because Trey is an excellent shooter credit to him, but he complains way too much about fouls. And I think a lot of what he's really gotten accustomed to in the NBA are these soft foul calls, you know, kind of like what Harden's been doing. Like anytime he drives to the basket and someone bumps him, it's a foul. But when you get to the playoffs and the foul calls matter more, you start to realize that, no, it's not just about bumping the person. You have to have the contact on the arm or there has to be a really good reason to call a foul because here's where the foul calls and just the ref calls in general matter more. So I'm actually really happy with the way Jimmy's played. I'm definitely happy that Trey has not been shooting well. And I think this has been such a great series so far for Miami. Right. And George, what's on your mind? I just like everyone on this pod because you've taken absolutely everything that I could have said. So I'm just going to have to repeat a whole bunch of stuff now. But let me try and make some new stuff. This is Jimmy. This is the Jimmy we've come to love, we've come to expect because he's, a, he's an emotional player. He really, really is. He, he plays to his emotions. And, uh, and this is what we love about him. He... When he's in his groove, when he's hit his, hit his mark, when he's hit his, um, his goals, he's a, such a dangerous player. He's always been known as the guy that wasn't be able to shoot, hasn't been able to shoot threes, and he's shooting better than Trey Young this, this, this series. So yeah, it might be an off, off couple of days for Trey Young, you know, with, the, with this, all this suffocating defense that's been played on him. But for Jimmy to come out and shoot five of nine is just better than anyone would have ever expected him to do. And he looks so comfortable as well. So, so comfortable. So, you know, nothing, nothing but great things for Jimmy. But on the other side of as well, no turnovers and no fouls with 45 points. He, he plays the passing lane so, so well. And he, and he smothers everyone. He, he, he does it with such a way where you, you can't call the foul on him because he's, he's barely making any illegal contact. He's anticipating where the ball's going to be and makes his play then. So, you know, he, on one side of the ball, he's offensively better than you know lollipop with hair on it, and on the other side of the of the ball, he's 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 one of the best defenders that we'll we'll see in these playoffs, in the next playoffs, and the in that we've seen in the last few playoffs as well. So, Jimmy is finally coming back to you know bubble Jimmy, and I hate saying that word. I'm I'm so sick of the word bubble because it means nothing, but I. I don't know. He's one of those players that you just you love to hate and you hate to love. If you're if you're not if you're not on this um you know Miami Heat bandwagon, but if he keeps it up, he's going to cement his name as one of the best players in Heat history. And if he can get us that ring, then you know he'll be top three. You know that's the thing. You know, like like I I want to bring up you know this this Heat Muse stat again. Like forty five points, zero fouls, zero turnovers. First person to do it since friggin' Dominique Wilkins, you know, and he's shooting better at the three point line than Trey Young. Like, who would have expected all of this, you know, in this to begin the playoffs? Like, we're not even a whole series in. We're just two friggin' games into this series, into this playoff so far. Like, it's just so impressive, and you could not ask for something amazing from Jimmy, something like this, and. You know, let's sit, let's see on like J Talk. Like, how do you feel, you know, as you watch Jimmy go on this tirade? Dude, like, first of all, shout out to Chris Brickley. That's the guy he works out with all the time, getting his shots right. He always posts their workouts. Um, he looked like a complete different player these past two games from the regular season. Honestly, going into the playoffs, I was worried. I was one of the fans that was worried like that we didn't have a closer, but as I was typing in, in our chat, I was always saying Jimmy's a playoff riser. So is Kyle. Uh, Hero and Bam haven't been the best players. Um, these series, obviously, Bam is an elite defender. Like, wherever he goes, whatever happens in offense, he's going to be an elite defender. But Jimmy has picked up their slack with his offensive play. Um, and we know, like, the Hawks are one of the best. I mean, one of the worst three-point shooting def- defenses in the whole league. Uh, but... What he's doing is actually like insane. Like, like this is like better than his bubble version. Like yesterday, like was it better than any of the games he played like in the finals? Like, and I know it was in the finals. I know it was like a bigger like stage, but that was an insane game. Like five threes for Jimmy. Like 
you would not expect that. This is the, this is what we signed him for. That contract talk, the pure Hooper talk on Twitter, like that all shut down yesterday, man. And I hope he can keep it going, which I know he's capable of. He just needs to stay confident on his three. If it's if his three is falling like another dimension, all opens up in the offense. Like it just opens up so much more on the offensive side of our team. And I'm happy for Jimmy, man. Honestly, right? Like Jimothy G Buckets showed up yesterday. And, you know, he proved to everyone that he is him, you know, and I don't like I feel like I've already, you know, said so much about it. that I don't want to keep going. Otherwise, this episode is going to be like two hours long. So I'm going to just take it easy. But overall, it was just such a great night to see Jimmy go off like that. Anyways, I feel like we cannot end that topic any more perfectly. So let's just move on. You know, we got to talk about this scorching hot defense for the Heat because they have been putting the clamps on Trey during this series. To start off the first two games in the series, Trey has been shooting 34% from the field and ended up committing 10 turnovers during the last game. Like, we always knew the Heat defense was deadly heading into the season, but how impressed have you guys been seeing the Heat take care of Trey Young and company? Like, um, kick us off, Christian. It's been amazing to watch the Heat take care of Atlanta like this. Atlanta is one of the top-rated offenses in the NBA. But stopping them on the three ball, stopping their star in Trey Young, and just holding them overall to a lower scoring outcome than they usually had in the regular season – it's really great just in general for a sports team. If you're holding them to a lower standard than they did in the regular season, you're doing a good job. But the fact that you're executing and winning on top of that is also sensational. You've seen some great defensive possessions from Miami holding Atlanta to just not that many points. I have to say a lot of my, I guess, commendations for Miami do come on the offensive end. But when you look at the series that Trey Young has been having, it's just staggering to see that like from the three-point line he's shooting such a low low below 20 percent that's unheard of for someone who's supposed to be the next Steph Curry I mean the only shots that I really do see Trey getting are like those little floaters down the lane like other than that if he's from beyond the three-point line you know Miami's putting clamps on that he's just become so ineffective and inefficient for this Atlanta team that he started to become more of a hassle you know so it's really great because I remember when we were talking about the keys for this series and what Miami has to do, uh, definitely keeping Trey Young to a modest point total was one of them. So the fact that they're doing that is great. And I know they're going to continue to do that in the next two games in Atlanta. Right. And George, how about you? Yeah, there's nothing there's nothing that we expected less from this team defensively. You know, it's, it's been our brand of basketball for, for as, as long as we can remember. Bringing in Larry to the group as well just made it even more so. Just, just having you know such a great, great defensive identity to, to rest the hat on, and we spoke about it before. Trey Young not being too happy about the defense either. It's just such a a weak, weak call. It's such a weak, uh, you know, cop out to, to not be able to handle a defense either. But like I said before about Jimmy as well, he plays the passing lane so well. This team does such a great do- job of anticipating where the ball will be and putting themselves in the position to take it without causing that many fouls. But there's also a downside as well. We, we really made an emphasis on game two to improve this, but when we start to play defense at the top of the key, when it gets down to, you know, Trey Young getting off the dribble or, or just starting his dribble, we had a tendency of fouling way too early in the shot clock or way too late in the shot clock as well. So, but we kept them out. We, we did a lot better job in game two as well. That we, we, we failed to close out on shooters as well as we did in the first game. So, we kind of it's kind of a give and take situation with that there, but if we can all just you know keep keep playing with that tenacity that and, and, and make the, the right adjustments in every game, it'll be more like game one where we we came out with the most dominant defensive performance we'll see from a playoff team. We we have seen the playoff team for the, for the last you know two or three seasons, so it's it's great to see that you know they're getting annoyed by it and they think they're not getting the calls, but. We're just getting in their heads. We're getting in their heads. That's what defense is supposed to do as well. It's, it's, it's to stop the ball and also to stop what's going to happen in the next possession because it's, it's, the, it's the BAMs, the Rudy effect as well. When they get into the paint, are they going to feel confident? You know, or are they going to have to look for ulterior, or, you know, alternate options? They have to do the same thing at the top of the key. If, we, if we're guarding their shooters too well, they're going to look to attack the paint and then they're going to see BAM. So 
it's a win scenario for us. We just play our, our brand of defense. They struggle. And, and you know, it's all it's all happy news down in Miami. But if we just got to keep it up, make sure that we don't drop off at all, especially for the fact that we're 2-0 up, up now. And I think the stat is when a team goes up 2-0, they're 90% likely to win the series. So let's not listen to any of that. Let's just play. Let's go. Let's sweep them. Let's get that extra rest that Atlanta also hated so much. So let's get that extra rest. Go for another trip to the Bahamas. Let's do what we do. And let's sweep these, these clowns. Right. And, you know, that's a good point you brought up, you know, about not worrying about the whole 2-0 and o thing. And, you know, a great point, Um, I think Jim B. Um, Orchard brought up in the last pod, or at least he wanted to, was that, you know, the Heat have this mentality where they're thinking, you know, they're actually down 0-1, that they're actually down 0-2, you know, and that's such a great mentality to have. So, you know, come game three, the Heat aren't going into that game with the mentality that, oh, we're up two games, nothing, it's over now. Like, nah, they're going into that thinking we're down 0-2, and if we don't win this game, we're going to go down 0-3. And you love that type of mentality from this type of team. So, you know, that's something great to think about. And um, J-Talk, what's on your mind? Yeah, uh, you know, he had been smothering Trey Young since the series started. We all knew Spo was going to blitz him as soon as they won. Like, we all knew that from uh, the regular season games. And I just want to, like, like shout out Max Drews, man. He's been holding his own on that on that end. Uh starting him was kind of like a really, really good move by Spo. And it's been kind of like working out, obviously. Um like some some day di- like some games he would have um like a single digit point game or like where he's not scoring, he's not shooting well, but he still hustles on the other end and makes sure it's like he gets like he makes a play here and there. Like if you guys remember the Celtics game, like I don't even think he was going that game, and then but like he was still making defensive plays against Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. But yeah, shout out Max Truce. But Jimmy and Bam, Kyle Lowry. I don't care what anybody says on Twitter. Like he's flopping this and that. I don't care. I watched him do it. I hated it when I used to play when we used to play against him. But now that he's on our team, I love that. I don't care what nobody says. That's like Kyle Lowry's like a player like you hate to play against but love to have on your team. So. Uh, Jimmy, we all know he's the best safety in the league. Uh, he doesn't get enough, like, he's become extremely underrated on the defensive end this season. I have no idea why, but he's still one of the best defenders in the league. Bam, you know, he's always going to come with an edge now with a chip on the shoulder. He didn't come in top three for defensive player of the year, which is ridiculous just because of the games played. But they pushed, I guess, the guard agenda. But he's going to play out of his mind now more than he ever did already. Um... Yeah, defensive end, that's what we take our pride on. That's what Spo masters, the defensive end. So it's really, really a piece of art. Right. And Anthony, how about you? I mean, yeah, these guys got into it. They pretty much covered everything. So I'm just going to be real quick. I want to talk specifically about the game yesterday. It was a really weird game from Trey. It was really uneven. I mean, he had great stats. Too. He had 25, 6, and 7, but he had 10 turnovers. And he had... 10 buckets. So he had just as many turnovers as baskets, which is obviously terrible. But then again, he shot 10 of 20 from the field, which is pretty good, but only two of 10 from three, which is terrible. So a really weird game. Obviously, uh, I'm sure he didn't feel comfortable out there, which is what we've all been saying, which is the best thing. But the thing about this Heat team that's different than any other team is he never gets a break. With other teams, they got two, maybe three great defenders that obviously at some point have to go to the bench. But even in yesterday's game, P.J. Tucker got in foul trouble. Well, guess who comes in? It's Caleb Martin. It's, trying to score on Caleb Martin is not any easier than trying to score on P.J. Tucker or when Bam went out, he brought in P.J. or when Gabe Vincent come in. He quite literally never gets a break. And you can see as the game goes on, it gets even harder for him. I think 18 of his 25 was in the first half yesterday, and I believe he only had three points in the fourth quarter. So obviously having that kind of depth on the defensive end is just such a great luxury. And there's probably no other team in the league that can match up with that, with that kind of depth. Right. You know, that's the thing for Miami, that the way how you have other guys willing to step up, you know, it's like the next man up type mentality. 
And, you know, the idea that once PJ goes out, you got a guy like Caleb Martin who's ready to do his thing and to play defense. That's what makes this Heat team so great because nobody is going to come onto the floor and be rusty just because they're not playing the usual minutes that they usually play or that they haven't been able to play the last couple of games because of a coach's decision or whatever. Like they're going to go out there and they're going to do their thing. And, they're going to be ready for those type of moments. And that's what we've seen from this Heat team so far. You know, like a huge example was game one. You know, Duncan, you know, he had a couple nights where, you know, he probably wouldn't play much. But come game one, he went in, had eight threes, 27 points, and one of the best games that we've seen from him in his career. And overall, like, and we're continuing to see it from these guys. Like, nothing is going to bother them. Like, they're just ready to step up and just try to help this team win. And that's what's most important at the end of the day when you're in this type of playoff environment. Anyways, you know, that's all we got to say about the defense because that's another thing I feel like we could just talk about so much, especially when you look at the defensive weapons that this team has. And, you know, we've talked so much about the goods Like, let's just quickly talk about a few things that I think maybe the Heat should fix heading into game three, because as Miami is halfway through the first round, like, is there anything that you guys believe the Heat should fix to further increase their chances of winning the series? Uh, We'll start off with you, George. Start to give the fans the shirts. That's all I'm going to say. That's that's (laughs) give the shirts back. I don't care who you need to talk to. That's who you give. That's that's what we need. We need shirts. We need fans with shirts. That's the only they, thing that's they, really bad. They they actually gave out the shirts from this last game. They did. Okay. Well, I'm just yeah. dumb then. I'm just rambling, and and there's nothing. Look, there's obviously some bad you gotta look at as well. With the good, you get the bad. We 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 still struggle to 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 you know identify you know which shooter was open last night. That was that we we didn't close out as well. As game as game one, but you're gonna it's to be expected. You're never gonna see the Atlanta Hawks have to have two or three bad straight games like they did the other night where they shot twenty something percent from three and twenty percent from the field. You they were gonna bounce back in one way or the other, and it came in the form of Bogdan uh, Bogdanovich as well. He 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 lit us up. He really did. Went twelve for eighteen, and it works the same way with the coin. He's not gonna have a two two back to back games like that. Uh, and it, it, that's great news for Miami because at the end of the day, if he starts to shoot 30, you know, get, get 30, 30 points alongside Trey Young, if they get Clint Cabello back, it might be a more interesting series. But as it stands, the Heat have done everything correctly. They've done what they needed to. They've identified, you know, which players are the most, uh, most at threat. And they, they've seen now which of the other players they're going to give you a, a tough night when, when players like Trey... It's still going, you know, minus 11, box minus score. He's still at 25 points and seven assists, but they're empty stats at the end of the day. He didn't win. He didn't really put the heat under any sort of pressure late in the, in, you know, late in the game, which is the most important time to really, really uh, to pull your fists up and, 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 and swing for the fences because that's the time to actually win. That's, that's where games are won. But we've had one player over the last two, the one player on the opposing team in the last two games get a plus minus of over one. Like that's, that's, that's incredible. It's been really, really great to see that, you know, how well the defense has been working, how, how well the offense is clicking, you know, with, with Jimmy's emergence last night. Uh, but I'm going to also point out the fact that Bam and, uh, and Hero are, are statistically not having the best start to the, to the series, but we're two games in, we're two games in different games within different situations. You know, in, in tomorrow tomorrow night, you might see Hero go for 30. You might have Bam's old 25-point, 15-rebound performance, three blocks. It's going to happen every now and again. So I, I take it as it comes. Really, I do, because it's going to be, a, you know, a game, of a, a wait-and-see type of game, because it's never going to be Bam averaging six points, and that's it. It's not going to be like that forever. So uh, to stay consistent and the bads won't, you know, overcome the goods and we'll keep winning games. Mm -hmm. And Anthony, what's on your mind? Well, if there's one thing that I would like the heat to fix, I would like them to fix Trey Young's hairline because I'm tired of looking at that dirty lollipop, Super Mario Goomba, diaper box baby kid crying at the post game after every single game. It's enough. 
It's the playoffs. Hey. Grow up. You want to be the villain. You want to be this and that, but you can't take a little foul call. It's ridiculous. The hypocrisy is terrible, and please fix it. Um, all right. <laughs> I'm Jay Talk. How about you? Um, just cut down the turnovers a little bit. Um, there's some possessions where the offense is stagnant sometimes. Uh, people are just standing around. Uh, a little bit more off ball movement and what you gonna call it? Get Bam and Hero some more touches. I feel like Hero hasn't been getting the touches he did in the regular season, but I get it. It's the playoffs, but I feel like he can like still score. I feel like he's our best scorer when it comes to the playoffs. Not best scorer, obviously Jimmy is, but like. Uh, second best score, obviously, but yeah, if you get Bam and Hero going, then the offense is literally like perfect with the way Jimmy is playing. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, defensively, you know they're locked in. Like freaking Bogdanovich knocked down like what nineteen points in the fourth quarter. Like that's fake, man. Like come on. <laughs> I agree. Like there's not really much for this Heat team to fix when you think of it. Um, Christian, can you come up with anything the Heat could fix? So last time when I looked at their free throw percentage, I said they need to do better on free throws. So it was 61%. Now they're shooting about 89%. That's excellent. So they improved their free throws. They have better defensive stats, more blocks, more steals than Atlanta. The only thing I can say is that Atlanta did have the rebounding edge last game. It was 40 to 34. So I think that rebounds kind of do tell the story of a game on how often a team's really, you know, getting in the paint, getting physical, being able to get those boards. Um, so I could offer that Miami didn't have to get that many rebounds because they were actually scoring a lot. But at the same time, you always want to have the rebounding edge over an opponent. So I'd say for the next game, um, you really don't have to fix anything on the offensive end. If Jimmy can go out and score 45 at night, let him. I mean, if Bam and Tyler want to coast along and then during the next series, you know, come and start playing a little bit more, that's fine. But, you know, if Bam, if Jimmy's going to score like that, then let Jimmy score like that. Just on the rebounding end, maybe get a couple more rebounds here and there. The turnovers, yeah, they could decrease a little bit. But other than that, Miami's been playing stellar so far these past two games. I agree. And, you know, basically, like what I said earlier, you know, there's not really much you can ask for this Heat team to fix because, you know, obviously there's been a couple of flaws like you guys have mentioned. But overall, this team has been looking really good. And, you know, I don't want to go too deep into it because, you know, it's only been two games. But you just can't help but feel so great watching this team bowl out. Like, they honestly haven't lost the beat, and they really haven't ever since they came out with the new rotation, you know, a couple weeks back. So, you know, just hope Miami keeps that momentum going, and let's just see where it takes them, you know. So I feel like we talked so much about everything about Game 2 and what they need to fix that let's move into the future. Let's talk about Game 3 for a quick second. So... For Miami, you know, they're heading off to Atlanta for these next two games. And the thing with Miami is that they're going against the Hawks team. That's actually 28 and 14 at home this year. So, like, I mean, I don't really think this should move Miami at all. Like, we know this team is going to hoop. It doesn't matter what this, these type of stats are or anything. But, like, overall, you know, what's everyone's expectations for the Heat as they get ready to take that commanding 3 to nothing lead against the Hawks? Uh, you're up first, Christian. So I think it's going to be a, a little bit more challenging um, at Atlanta. Uh, the Hawks do have a really good home rec record, but Miami also has like a great away record. Uh, I think that it's going to be a little bit more of a lower scoring game for Miami, probably in the 108 range. Uh, but as far as being able to contain Atlanta, even in their own house, I think that it's not going to be too difficult for Miami. Um, even though Trey is going to be in his home arena, I can't see him going for more than 25. I think that keeping Trey under 25 is really the key to securing these games. So I'm going to go with a final score prediction of, you know, 108-96, you know, a bit of a closer game. But again, it, it, I just feel like Miami has such a great handle on this series, especially on the defensive end. I don't think that the crowd's really going to be affecting that too much. Right. And you, Anthony? Well, going into the series, I did anticipate it would probably go five, maybe be the genuine, maybe be the gentleman's type sweep where you win the first two at home. Maybe they get some momentum going to the third game and they're able to get a win off of that. But I changed my mind the way that he'd have been dominating this team. I fully don't expect anything to change at all. Uh, I do want to see Bam at a bio get his act together. Obviously, defensively, he's been perfect, but. I don't want to wait to see him start to get his act together until next series. Cause if you're going against Joel and B that might be too late. 
So I expect him to come out strong. I expect Tyler Hero to come out strong. We've seen those guys be we've seen those guys be really good players for a very long time. And as long as Trey Young doesn't cry at the end of the game, that's that's fine by me. But I'm definitely not predicting that because he probably will, and he's probably gonna sound a lot like this. My gosh. That's it. <laughs> I and Jay talk you. Yeah, the Hawks, like, I think they had like a winning streak at home, but the Heat just needs to keep listening to Trey. Like, containing Trey is the key, regardless. Uh, the last game would have been a blowout if Bogdanovich didn't have a fake fourth quarter. I'm going to keep saying it. That was such a fake fourth quarter. He was knocking everything down. But, um, yeah, they just need to keep listening to Trey. Uh, keep running offense through Jimmy. Uh, hopefully, Bam steps up. I feel like he's going to have a big game next game. And I think Hero might have game four. Or it's, like, interchangeable, too. But one of them is going to have a big game. They're due for one, uh, especially Hero. Like, he's actually been off a little bit. He hasn't been taking as much shots as he did in the regular season. But, you know, that was due to happen since it is the playoffs. But Kyle Lowry is due for a big game also. They're all due for big games because Jimmy's kind of been carrying the scoring load. But they just need to keep listening to Trey, keep the defense the same way. Uh yeah, I think I think we'll still I think we'll still call it a sweep here. Hopefully they don't steal one and gain momentum because I don't want Trey Young to win at all. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I feel that hundred percent. And what's on your mind, George? Um, I think this is the time that um Trey Young really picks it up and they and they come back and they beat us in, in six. This is the time it's 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 gonna happen. And that's sorry, that's what NBA Twitter's telling me. So um <laughs> you are my thoughts. It's gonna be it's definitely going to be a different situation because the last time we were there, we did lose. They they did have Clint Cabela back then as well. They were fully healthy, but we didn't have Kyle Lowry. It was between that stretch of games where Lowry was out, I believe it was the second time when he took another personal um, week to himself. I mean, we, we still don't know what that was for and we don't, we, we don't need to know, but he took the time off and that's where we really struggled as a team to really put it all together. We were lacking a point guard, lacking real leadership and and and... Um, you know, just that pure, pure passer that we actually needed. So, you know, this time it's different. Lowry's back. They're still without Capella. There is a, there is actually a slight, slight chance he makes an appearance for game three, a bigger chance that he makes an appearance for game four. Um, I, I don't, I don't want that to happen. <laughs> I don't want to get a situation where he comes back. I'm not scared of Capella at the end of the day. If it comes in or not, he's still going to be slow. Slow's kind of injured as well. And that's when I think Bam will really, we'll see, uh, Bam really come into his own as a, you know to to really put on a show to put Capella back you know back on the bench where he, where he needs to be right now. But look, it's going to be you know a different demon as well. It's going to help as well with the fact that we have two days rest going there, so we get to travel and then stay there and then play. Uh, we got those two days off, which is it's huge in this setting as well because there's nothing worse um, from what I've been told <laughs> than traveling and playing a game on the, the next night or the same night. So it's um. No, it's 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 in our favor still. We're still with a 2-0 lead. We're in the heads. We've got the better team. We've got the better coach. We've got everything we need to do. We have everything we need to to really close out this series in style. Hopefully, we can destroy them in the front of their home fans in the next two games and sweep them there. It'd be nice to come back to Miami, you know, with some smiles on their faces. So it's going to be a fun watch. Everyone be there. And, uh, and yeah, we got heat. Right. You know, and you guys are talking about wanting a sweep and man, do I need it? You know, I said it in a couple of pods ago. I needed to shut the media up and also because I think it would be good for Miami to get some rest, depending on how that Sixers and Raptors series goes. But also, like, I think it would also be good for the fact that Trey Young has been whining a lot. So it would just be good if we can just simply keep that going for game three and game four. But, you know, that's just me. And honestly, like this Heat team, you know, like we talked about, they have that mentality where they're going to think that they're trailing in the series. So they're coming into this game three thinking that they're down 0-2. You know, just use that in mind and just feel like you guys need to win this game and that and just simply bowl out. Like there's no other way you can say it at that point. And the, the other thing for Miami is this, like, you know that, Atlanta like come on Miami runs Atlanta we don't really need to debate this it's a known fact so if Miami could just blow them out and we could just hear those let's go heat chants like in a friggin playoff game for crying out loud I would love it and I would just be such a great thing to have in my soul 
you know, to hear it. And it would just be funny if the if the Heat are blowing them out and the Hawks announcer, I mean, the Hawks, um, what is it? Their sound system people said, screw it. And they just play papers. Like that would just be the greatest thing to see come playoff time. So that's basically my take for it. And yes, I do see the Heat winning this game, just like some of you guys. And, you know, We'll see what happens. But overall, we're heading into game three, feeling more confident than ever. So let's go heat, right? Anyways, we talked so much in today's episode. Uh, before we close it out, make sure to check out our Twitter and Instagram page at HVTW Podcast while checking out our website at HVTWpodcast.wordpress.com. That way you can still have access to 24-7 Miami Heat content even while we're not recording a new episode. Also, we hope you guys love today's episode because we'll be recording a new one after every playoff win for the Heat, meaning that if God is willing, we'll have at least 14 more episodes to drop before we officially close the door on season two of Heat versus the World. Anyways, thank you for tuning in to today's episode of the Heat versus the World podcast, and we'll see you guys soon with another episode. Hit my music because we out. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time with a brand new episode of the Heat vs. the World podcast.